guys, welcome back to Miss Medic. Today I will be talking about pleural effusion. And by the end of this talk, you should know the different types of pleural effusion, the investigations, and how pleural effusions are managed. So let's start with the basics. What is a pleural effusion? Well, by definition, a pleural effusion is a collection of fluid within the pleural space. And pleural effusions can be transudate or exudate. And I will go into this further in a short while. So how do we determine whether the pleural effusion is transudate or exudate? Will we like to aspirate the fluid to find out? However, as a rule of thumb, if a pleural effusion is bilateral, it tends to be transudate. In exams, you are often asked what is the fluid sent off for. This is a really common question and it comes up a lot in OSCEs as a question at the end of a station. So you would send the pleural fluid off for a number of different things, including pH, protein, LDH, gram stain, Sometimes even glucose, because a very low glucose level in the pleural fluid would suggest rheumatoid arthritis or some other conditions. And sometimes you would send it off for amylase if you're suspecting the pleural effusion to be pancreatitis. Also, you would send the pleural fluid to cytology and also for microbiology culture. So... Coming back to what is transudate and exudate, well, it all really depends on the level of protein. So in transudate pleural effusions, the protein content is low. So it's less than 25 grams per liter. Whereas in exudate pleural effusions, there's a large amount of protein, generally greater than 35 grams per liter. And in medicine, of course, there's a lot of things to remember. So a way you can differentiate these two is thinking of exudate as basically like an exudate. So if you're going out with an ex, generally it's a big problem. And problem begins with PR and so does protein. So remember... Dating an X is a big problem, so an exudate pleural effusion will give you a big or large amount of protein. So hopefully you find that we memory aid useful. And you probably have noticed there's a grey area here. For instance, transudate pleural effusions are less than 25, whereas exudate pleural effusions are greater than 35 grams per litre. So what about the pleural effusions that are, say, 27 grams per litre of protein or 28 grams per litre of protein? What are they? So if a pleural effusion has a protein level of between 25 grams per litre and 35 grams per litre, you can use a criteria called LIGHTS criteria. So Light's criteria states that pleural effusion is exudate if one of the following applies. And this is really important. You need to remember it's only one of these three criteria needed. So the first one is it's exudate if the pleural fluid to the serum protein fluid ratio is greater than 0.5. It's exudate if the pleural fluid to the serum LDH is greater than 0.6 and it's exudate if the pleural fluid LDH is greater than two-thirds the upper limit of normal serum. So you just need one of those three criteria to make it exudate. So moving on, what are the symptoms of pleural effusions? Well, like most respiratory conditions, Breathlessness is a symptom of pleural effusions. A patient may also have chest pain and the patient may have symptoms or signs of the underlying condition causing pleural effusions. 
For example, heart failure gives a transient date, bilateral, plural effusion, and in someone with heart failure, they're obviously going to have signs like peripheral edema, and you may notice this as well as the patient's breathlessness with the plural effusions. So when you go to examine a patient with a plural effusion, you may be able to elicit and see certain signs. So generally, patients with pleural effusions will have a reduced chest expansion on the side of the effusion. They will also have reduced air entry on the side of the pleural effusion. And when you percuss over the chest on the side of pleural effusion, you will get a dull, dull note or classically a stony dull note. And this is the most reliable sign you can elicit. So bear this in mind for real life and also for, for the exams. You'll get um, decreased vocal resonance on the side of the pleural effusion. And sometimes there may even be bronchial breathing above the pleural effusion. And if a pleural effusion is very large, there may be tracheal deviation away from it. Now moving on to the investigations. In anyone with a pleural effusion, you need to do a chest x-ray. So always think to do a chest x-ray. And on a, in a patient with a pleural effusion, on the chest x-ray, there will be generally an area of whiteness and this represents the fluid. Now I've just put in a sketch here of a chest x-ray so we can't see those signs on this we drawn, but the signs you will be looking for are this area of whiteness at the base of the lung. And when you think about it, due to gravity, fluid would fall to the base of the lung. So you would have this white area and it would obliterate the costophrenic angle. All this fluid would gather there and it would be hard to see the costophrenic angle. Sometimes in very large pleural effusions, there may be complete whiteout of one side of the lung. And sometimes if a patient has bilateral pleural effusions, such as in heart failure, you'll see other signs on the chest x-ray in keeping with heart failure, such as curly B lines and fluid in the horizontal fissure. And it's important to aspirate pleural effusion. I know I've mentioned this before, but I'm going to reiterate this point, particularly if you suspect an exudate pleural effusion. There are some times when you don't aspirate a pleural effusion. This is generally in bilateral pleural effusions. And to aspirate, you're going to do it under ultrasound guidance and you're using a fine bore 21 gauge, gauge needle and 50 ml syringe. So now let's move on to the types of pleural effusion. So you have transudate pleural effusions, which are generally associated with failures in systems. So think heart failure, liver failure, problems with the kidneys, such as nephrotic syndrome. Then you get things like hypothyroidism. There's also a very rare cause of transudate pleural effusion called Meg syndrome which is a transudate right-sided pleural effusion associated with a benign ovarian tumour and ascites. So it's that triad of right-sided pleural effusion, benign ovarian tumour and ascites. Causes of exudate pleural effusion, on the other hand, include things like rheumatoid arthritis, pancreatitis, pneumonia, lung cancer and TB. So when might you suspect an empyema? Now, this is a common exam question. Empyema is de defined as frank pus in the pleural space. And you would suspect this if the pH of the pleural effusion was very low, less than 7.2. And finally, how would you treat a pleural effusion? So basically, it's best to treat the underlying condition. For example, in heart failure, you may give diuretics. 
And if there is an empyema or very large pleural effusion, you should insert an intercostal drain. And if pleural effusions are recurrent, you can do pleurodesis, um, which allows adhesion between the parietal and visceral pleura. Now, that concludes today's talks. talk. I'm just going to go over the take-home messages of today. So there are two types of pleural effusions, transudate and exudate. Bilateral pleural effusions are more commonly transudate and a chest x-ray will show blunting of the costophrenic angle in pleural effusions. I hope you enjoyed this video. Don't forget to give it a big thumbs up and subscribe to the channel so you don't miss out on any more video updates.